935 now here on Dell Aware. I'm Peter MacArthur. Appreciate you being with us this morning. Chris Burkhardt joining us from Placer Staffing. You know, Chris, I've been thinking about when we first got locked down and how it was supposed to be a 14-day affair that would let us kind of even out the curve of the coronavirus and then get back to work. Uh, back to work has been hard to come by for a lot of people, Chris. Latest numbers just out this morning, 750,000 751, to be precise, 751,000 Americans claiming first-time jobless benefits last week. What are you thinking about that number? Well, first things, happy Thursday, Peter. Yes, sir. Um, so the good news is jobless claims are falling. The weird or tough part is that the, the trajectory of the claims, it's just so slow, it's really hard to, to even really notice it. And... It, to your point about the 14 days, at the point we all went into that first lockdown, if we would have thought that we'd be celebrating a number of 750, um, this number is still four times larger than it was, uh, you know, during that day that you mentioned. I think the biggest challenge that we see overall is there are industries and there are companies that just have tremendous uncertainty about the long term. If you're in hospitality, if you're in travel or leisure, you're sitting and trying to decide if your company or your industry is going to come back to a point where you can work there. And if we're trying to help people get into jobs that do exist in sales or customer service or e-commerce. But it's quite an interesting story. The good news, it's going down. It's stabilizing. Um, and I guess the stabilizing point means that although there are still layoffs happening, it is at least in balance or slightly below that of the jobs that are being created. Yeah. And it's strange, too, to think that in some of the cases you mentioned, Chris, let's say a restaurant or someone in the hospitality industry, some of those those places almost are foundationally upset by this. In other words, they might not operate the exact same way they did ever again. And I think for some, and maybe it's it's a, a rare crowd I'm talking about here, you know, their skill sets that used to work in that industry might not work as well anymore because that's, that's not the way they're going to operate moving forward. Well, this might be a bit of a stretch, but think of a company like Boeing that makes airplanes. Mm -hmm. uh, how do they know what the demand's gonna be for airplanes with airplane travel and leisure and business travel being fundamentally changed. Yeah. There's this thought that ideas and patterns have been accelerated by 10 years. So how do you plan for that? You know, Peter, one interesting thing, yeah. there were 365,000 jobs added in October. Um, if you'd have had me on in February, we would have been doing high fives because <laughs> that's right. um, almost d double the number yep. that we were experiencing in February. And I got one bright spot because I know you appreciate that. <laughs> Believe it or not, one third of those jobs were created in hospitality and leisure. So how do you read these tea leaves? Right, exactly. It's great to hear the, the raw numbers. And, and obviously, 365 is, is a brilliant number. 200,000 is a pretty decent month. So uh, that, that's, that's nice to see at least some additions. But yeah, in the grand scheme, it is a little harder to decipher impact with that. Let me ask you this. Speaking of impacts, a, a lot of people have, have obviously been impacted by what the, the things we're talking to this year. What about that person who, Chris, might have been making sixty or 70000 and they find themselves now perhaps entertaining offers that are closer to a $45,000, $50,000 mark? What, what kind of advice would you give to someone that might be weighing the option of taking less to go back to work? Well, Peter... There's never been a need for more flexibility and adaptability for all of us as workers today. So you've got to evaluate your personal situation. You know, if you need to take it, take it. Situations change. Uh, if you can wait and you're blessed, then wait. Now that may seem kind of obvious in some respects, but what we are seeing is we're helping people have honest conversations with employers. Perhaps it's a job you could do as a freelance. Uh, perhaps you could be a contractor. Peter, customers call us every day and say they'd like us to hire this person for this project. So I'm just introducing the idea, if this is a brave new world and eventually you need to make 70, could you offer that employer an opportunity to do it for the length of that project? Mm -hmm. Give yourself some flexibility. Uh, we have helped people do difficult things like that, but. 
I know finances and budgeting come into play. There's a lot of anxiety around this. So it's got to be a very personal strategy, but there's always something you can do to navigate within your situation. And if anybody needs any help with that, I'm happy to help them think that through. Because uh, you don't want to be locked in. I get it. But we got bills to pay. And, and the other thing is if you can get in there and prove yourself, you'd be surprised how quickly wages uh, and roles are changing today. With four out of ten people not going back to their job, believe it or not, there's interesting jobs that need to be filled. So, you know, if you can get in with things accelerating the way they have, you could probably move around in your assignment more quickly than you might normally be able to do so. Yeah, that's that's great, uh, great advice, Chris. Um, we've heard stories about people using their networks to be able to find work quickly. It's such a valuable component that we talk about here. Talk about the, the, the compassion, if you will, within someone's network, helping get people back to work with using almost a, a word of mouth approach. Well, this is probably what I'm most excited about to talk with you about, Peter. I've talked on this show before that if you're looking for work, you're much more likely to get your next job from someone you know. Yeah. You know, through networking. But networking is such a dirty word. All that means is that's your friend, a past coworker, someone you met at an event. But here's the positive trend, and I think it is a national thing. There's growing evidence that networks are rallying to help people. But all that means is that you can't be afraid to get the word out that you're looking for work and that you'd love to hear about openings where people work or when they're networking. So I think it's a bit of common sense. More than likely, the people in your network have either had to help themselves or help someone in their household with the same process. So there is just an awareness and I'll call it a new skill set with so many people needing to change or churn their job this year. It's just much more commonplace for me to call you up, Peter, and say, hey, I'm in between. We used to work together. I think you work at a great place. If you hear anything, will you let me know? It's just a more common, common pattern. And with that, people are getting good at it. And we have recent stories of folks getting multiple offers this way. And, you know, you could say, well, I'm in the staffing business. I want my recruiters to help people. But in the end, I know we have to help people get back on their feet. And this is something that used to be hard to do because when you talk to someone else, they didn't know what to do to help you. Right. But it's such a repetitive pattern. I think they're they're getting on board with this idea. Yeah, it's all in the ask, and and really always has been. If you don't ask that question, don't ask for that help, you know what the answer will be. There will not be one. So uh, that, that's an easy conclusion to draw. Chris Burkhart, Placer Staffing, joining us here. You offered to uh, give people a little bit of a hand with some of the things we talked about this morning. Where can they turn to find out more about you and your operation, Chris? All you have to do is get on the Internet, myplacers.com. Uh, it's the easiest way to get a hold of us. We do have an act of kindness program with a simple Internet form. Uh, you know, lots of folks are taking uh, advantage of the opportunity, and uh, I don't think it needs to be said, but there's no charge. We just want to help people with the advice that we have that might be new to them. Yeah, good stuff. Always a pleasure, sir. I hope you have a nice weekend. Talk to you soon, Peter. All right. Chris Burkhardt, Placer Staffing here on Dell Aware.